Hello everyone, Bill Edwards, Fireman57 here. You know, a couple of months ago I moved to a new house and I set up this radio shack and almost immediately I began to suffer some serious intermod interference. So I want to tell you about how I used a software to find radio and some spectrum analyzer software to figure out what kind of a notch filter I needed to solve the problem. And that is what this video is about. I'll start by giving you a little tour of my radio shack. All of my radios are mounted in a rack system. There's a Middle Atlantic 10RU system down below and a 6RU system up above with the speakers in it. In the 10RU system, at the top of it is a Furman power conditioner that mainly protects against over voltages. And then below that, there are uh, four Uniden 996 XT scanners, and below that, two 996 P2 Phase 2 scanners. In the bottom of that rack is just a perforated blank. It used to be the home of an ICOM R7000, and uh, maybe at some point will be the home of a SDS200, but right now it's a blank. Up above, there are eight speakers in that top rack, uh, and two of those are controlled by a monoprice speaker selector with volume control, and I'll tell you why it's set up that way. The reason there are eight speakers and, and only six scanners visible in that rack is because down below here, down on the floor, in this kind of <laughs> poor man's rack, there are two more scanners and some other radios. So I'll tell you what that's about. As you see down at the bottom of this, homemade rack, there are two uh, Uniden 996T series scanners, and those are programmed for railroad radio frequencies, and I put that out on Broadcastify.com. I take the signals out of those radios, run them through a compressor and equalizer system, as you see here, to try to improve the audio quality, and then I'll take that over to a computer. I'll show you how that works. Okay, so the audio coming out of the equalizer goes into this Dell Ultra Small Form Factor computer. That's what connects to Broadcastify.com. There are also six Motorola MaxTrack radios here that I use for ATCS monitoring. I won't go into the whole ATS story, ATCS story right now, but anyway, there's where the other two radios are that are tied to the monoprice volume control. As I said, this whole story started because I set up the scanner shack in the new house and began to suffer intermod like this. Well, my first thought to try to see what was going on was to try a different antenna because I had started with this disco antenna and even had a preamp on it at one point. That was a bad idea. So then I went to the other extreme and tried this little mag mount mobile antenna mounted on the rain gutter. But the intermod interference continued, even with that antenna. Time to try something different. Okay, so time to turn to some science to diagnose the problem and figure out a way to fix it. And I thought one good way to do that might be to try a software to find radio. So I bought one of these SDR Play RSP1A software to find radios, went on their website in the software and download section and in on that website in addition to the SDR Uno receiver software they also offer uh, a spectrum analyzer spectrum analyzer software that you can use with this software to find radio and it's written by apparently written by a guy named Steve Andrew Steve Andrew I don't know who you are but you are my hero because this is really a terrific piece of software it has, the, in some ways, the look and the function of a $10,000 piece of Hewlett-Packard equipment. And I'm not saying it's calibrated as tightly, but it serves the purpose for what I needed. So I downloaded and installed that software, and I'm going to give it a try. I downloaded the software and installed the drivers, and now it's time to connect the RSP-1A 
to my radio network and start the diagnosis. I use these Stridsberg 8-port active multi-couplers so that I, I can take the signal coming in from the antenna and split it to several different radios without any loss. And I'm going to hook the software-defined radio to that same splitter. So the software-defined radio is going to get the exact same signal that all of the scanners are also receiving. I put on a uh, SMA to BNC adapter and that will connect the software-defined radio to the multi-coupler. You also have to buy a USB-A to USB-B cable not supplied with the radio and install that too. Here is the Spectrum Analyzer software in action. I won't go through the whole story of all the searching that I did. I mean, it wasn't all that complicated, but to make a long story short, I set the railroad band in the center of the spectrum display and starting at a very wide span and narrowing down, narrowing down, narrowing down, I looked for signals like the one you see on the far left here that were just much stronger than anything else. And, well, you hear some of that intermod in there, and what you'll notice is any time there's intermod, like this, any time there's intermod, you'll see signal strength at that signal on the far left there. The signal on the far left may be highly energized and not have intermod, but if there is intermod, that signal will be active. So I was able to pretty quickly determine that that signal is one of the culprits in causing the intermod. You can see the way I have the spectrum analyzer set up. The yellow trace shows the peak signal strength received on any particular frequency, and the red trace shows the instantaneous signal strength. That signal at the far left is 158.100. You might recognize 158.100 as a pager frequency. If you don't, some quick googling will take you to a page like this and it becomes fairly obvious in short order that I have a interference problem from pagers. Why would I suddenly have an interference problem with pagers? Well the answer is because when I move to this new house it is less than a half a mile from this thing, a level one trauma center hospital that has a substantial antenna farm on the roof, firing off medical pager signals incessantly. There's also a heliport on the roof. The helicopters make a lot of noise, but that's not what's causing the intermod. Okay, back to our story. So, remember when we were looking at the spectrum display, the signal strength from that pager signal was around minus 42 dBm. To put that level of signal strength in perspective, if we had good calibrated signal strength meters on these scanners and we were receiving a signal at a signal strength of S9, that would be a really great signal strength. The range of frequencies that we're dealing in here, a signal strength on, on the meter of S9 would be equivalent to about minus 93 dBm. So these medical pagers are booming in at around minus 43 dBm, which is about 300 times the voltage and 100,000 times the wattage of an S9 signal. So to put this in perspective, an acceptable signal around S5 on an S meter equates to minus 117 dBm. A great signal, S9 on an S meter, equates to minus 93 dBm. With these medical pagers, I'm receiving all the way up at minus 43 dBm. Okay, we know the problem and we know the effect, so now it's time to implement a solution. Google is our friend. We'll go over here and look for uh, pager notch filter. One of the results that pops up is a company called Power Electronics, so we'll click on that link and that takes us over to their website and on their website they have a nice little tutorial about intermod some of the details of what causes it and what to do about it so they talk about basically what it is and make really three points that the reason it's such a problem for us with scanners is because it's very high power signals used very frequently and the particular frequencies that are involved 
are a real complication uh, for creating Intermod in the front ends of our scanners. So we'll go up here and click on the page for filters for scanners. Takes us over to this page. The frequency that we're having trouble with is 158.100 megahertz. They have a 158 megahertz filter right here in their catalog. We click the link for that filter and it takes us over here to a performance chart. And what the chart shows is that at the target frequency of 158.100 megahertz, this filter should knock out almost 39 dB of signal strength. It'll also have a little bit of an effect over here in the railroad band, so we'll have to keep an eye on it as to see whether or not uh, that effect depresses the signal strength in the frequencies that we still want to receive or not. Okay, so let's order that filter and put it in the circuit. And what I'm going to do is take this PAR filter that's tuned for 158.1 megahertz, put it in on the antenna lead before any of the other apparatus in the radio shack here. So there's the lead coming in into the filter, then that goes into the various multi-couplers that feed all of these radios. Well, now if we go over here and look on the spectrum display, on the far left we can see the maximum signal strength that the pager was hitting before we put the filter into the circuit and what you see now is the max signal strength from those pagers is getting up around the minus 70 something dBm but nowhere near the height of signal strength that that was complicating life uh, before the notch filter was put in place. So here I'll reset the max and you can see for yourself the, the max signal strength with the notch filter in place jumps up somewhere here around somewhere in the minus 70 dBm range nowhere near where it was before. So you know I don't get any compensation for power filters for doing this. I have no interest in that company. My interest is just to tell people that it works, that power filter works to achieve what I needed to knock down these interfering pager frequencies and get that signal strength down to something that the front end of my scanners can handle. And you know here the, the proof is in the use because we can go back over here, take the filter out of the circuit. So let's do that right now. We'll take the filter out of the circuit. Couple the antenna lead back into the multi-coupler. Leave the power filter sitting here on the desk. There it is. And now we'll go back over and see what effect this has on signal strength. So what you see is at the far left, 158.1 with the filter in. was never jumping up to more than about minus 75 with the filter out. We're right back up in the minus 35 to minus 40 dBm range way more than the railroad radio frequencies that are displayed on here or any other signals that are displayed in this part of the radio spectrum. So this is clearly overload. Look at the way, oh my god, minus 38, something like that. So this is way more signal strength than the front end of these scanners can handle. We've got to knock that out and we've found an effective way to do it. Okay, so let's go put the PAR filter back into the circuit. We'll couple it to the antenna lead and to the multi-coupler. And again, come back and look at the display. On the far left, we can see the kind of peak signal strength that we were receiving on 158.1 without the filter. You can see it's up there in minus 30-something dBm. And now with the filter back in the circuit, we're just not seeing that kind of signal strength. In fact, I'll reset the peak trace here so it make it a little more clear what we're seeing. Yeah, get that right. And then we'll see at 158.1 the peak signal strength with the filter in the circuit never comes in higher than about minus 75, almost minus 80, something like that. It's a tremendous improvement. There's no intermod heard. And uh, 
in terms of what the filter advertised, we, we were getting signal strength up around minus 38 dBm. The filter said it would knock out about 39, and it did, got us right down to where it said it would. Uh, the other concern was, does it have any deleterious effect on reducing the signal strength on the signals that we want to receive here in the railroad band? But you can see, no, the signals on the railroad band are coming in just fine. So everything's in balance now. So to summarize, a perfectly good signal around S9 would be down here at around minus 93 dBm. But these pagers were hitting us with signals as high as minus 43 dBm. Put the PAR filter in place, it knocks out all of that extra signal strength. In the range of railroad frequencies that we're interested in, we're still receiving signal strength anywhere from S5 to over S9 perfectly good signals with no intermod. So exactly what we want. Bottom line is, I set up the new scanner shack here at my house. I was suffering a lot of intermod from medical pagers. I used a software to find radio and some spectrum analyzer software to find the problem. Use that notch filter from PAR filters to solve the problem. And uh, so the shack is now performing the way I want it to. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. I'll put some links to some of these products uh, down below in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. Thanks a lot. Hope it helps you.